Y'all got about two neighbors. Just pow, pow, sit. That's all. Just pow, pow, sit. <laughs> well, good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome. Happy uh, belated Merry Christmas. Merry belated Christmas and uh, uh, happy uh, early New Year. How about that? Now, we're kind of in the week. We're suspended between two major milestones, two major holidays, Christmas uh, and the, the New Year. And if you're like me, then two drastic things happened to you over the past couple of weeks. Two really bad things happened to you in the past couple of weeks, if you're like me. Drastic thing number one is you put on a few pounds. <laughs> my, my family, man, we've been so blessed by, by, by so many of our church family members that gave us gifts, and all these gifts were snacks. <laughs> like like box of chocolates and, and, and almond cookies and, and Chex Mix. Chex Mix is just crunchy sugar. <laughs> a flavored popcorn. Chocolate milk. Somebody gave us a box of chocolate milk. <laughs> Do you know where all that stuff went? Right here, right around my hip and my thigh area. Man, I, I put on a few pounds. I feel, like, I feel like I put on about 10 to 15 pounds. I could tell because when I was putting on my skinny jeans this morning, I could hear my jeans say, oh my goodness. <laughs> So drastic thing number one that should have happened to you these past couple of weeks is you put on a few pounds. Drastic thing number two is this. You are now more broke than you've been all year. <laughs> you spent so much money on turkey dinners, on Christmas lights, on Christmas trees, on Christmas ornaments, on Christmas presents. You spent so much money in the last couple of weeks that now you are Broker than broke. You are not broke. You are more broker than, than broke. <laughs> this time of the year is what, what I like. This is a crazy time. It's what I like to call the holiday hangover. Yeah, because the holiday hangovers, when I used to drink a lot, I don't drink anymore. But every time I wake up with a hangover, I'd always say this. I'd always say, I'm never going to do that again. And guess what I do? I go back and do it again. Do you know that Christmas happens at the same time of the year every year? And usually two things happen. We gain weight, lose money. Gain weight, lose money. Gain weight, lose money. Gain weight, lose. Wouldn't it be awesome if we gain money, lost weight? Gain money, lose weight. Gain money, lose weight. <laughs> this is the holiday hangers. But listen, we're right. We're suspended the week before New Year's. We got a couple more days in the New Year's. And, and it's usually during this time where there's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of hope. There's a lot of like, ooh, I want a better me. It's called the New Year's resolution. And, and maybe this year, you're, you're telling yourself, I'm going to lose some weight. Or maybe this year, you're telling yourself, I'm going to save some money. Or maybe this year, you're, like, you're telling yourself, I'm going to quit smoking or I'm going to quit drinking. Or, or, or maybe if, if, if you're diagnosed with some sort of cancer or some sort of diabetes, you're like, you know what? This year, I'm going to beat diabetes. I am going to beat that. This is this a year of high expectations. You know what resolutions mean to me? It simply means this. Resolutions mean I am not ready to settle for where I'm at. I'm not settling for where I'm at. I'm not satisfied with the life that I'm at now, which means that I got some unfinished business. I got some work to do. If I was to die today, I'd die unhappy, unfulfilled, and incomplete. Why? Because there's destiny that awaits me. There's, a, there's skinny jeans that await me. There's, there's a savings account that, uh, that awaits me, which means that you have unfinished business. Tell your neighbor, you got unfinished business. Yes, we have, we have unfinished business. Now, I'm going to release to you a secret to accomplishing and fulfilling the visions and the plans and the purposes that God has for you. I'm going to give you a secret that will release the skinnier you, the healthier you, the stronger you, the more wealthy you. I'm going to release to you a secret. The key to unfinished business is to act. The key, we could talk about it. We could talk about the skinny you, you could, we could talk about the wealthy you, you could talk about the promotion you, but, but listen, here's a principle in life. Nothing gets done if nothing gets done. You could FaceTime chat that all you want, but you could have it, I'll give it to you for free. Nothing gets done if nothing gets done. When Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the church of Colossae, uh, uh, the Colossians, in, in chapter 4, as he closes his letter, he, he, he gives an instruction to all the saints, and particularly a guy named Archippus. Now, in, this, in the book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, look at what he says. Tell Archippus, you know you're all Archippus, tell your, tell your neighbor, today your name is Archippus. Okay, he goes, tell Archippus, 
see to it that you complete the ministry that you have received from the Lord. See to it that you have complete the ministry. See to it that you complete the ministry. See to it that you complete the ministry. God does not want to leave loose ends in your life. See to it that you complete the ministry. Your unfinished business needs to be finished. Your unfinished business needs to be finished. Finish. See to it that you complete the ministry that the Lord has given you. You know that losing weight is a ministry. You know that gaining money is a ministry. You know that your job is a ministry. Your marriage is a ministry. Your health is a ministry. God does not want to leave your life open-ended. God wants to complete the work that he has started in you. See to it, Archippus, that you complete the ministry that the Lord has given you. You got to finish the work that the Lord has given you. Well, how then? How, well, so, okay, bam. Unfinished business. The key to it is to act. How shall we act? I do a lot of word study in the Hebrew and the Greek. Um, and and, and this, this, this upcoming year to us is the year 2019. In the Hebrew calendar, in the Jewish calendar, it's the year 5779. The year 5779 literally means this. It means to counsel, to plan. To counsel, to plan. The key to your unfinished business is to act. How do you act? You seek counsel. For a multitude of counsel, every word shall be established. And you prepare yourself an action plan. So many of our lives are suspended in the in-betweens, getting nothing done because we don't seek counsel and we don't have an action plan over our lives. The key to unfinished business is to act. How do we act? To seek counsel and to plan. Well, today I just want to be your counselor. I want to be your advisor. I want to be uh, your promoter, your advocate. And, and, and I'm going to provide you just a simple action plan in order to prepare you for the new year. How do we start with that? Well, with every action plan, it always starts with this. Number one, start with a vision and write it down. Start with a vision and write it down. You want to complete your unfinished business? You want to finish your unfinished business? You have to start with a vision and write it down. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, without a vision, the people go wild. The reason why your life is wild, you're constantly going to many different places, many different things. The reason why your life is wild, not accomplishing anything, is because you don't have a vision over your life. You don't have a vision for yourself. Here's some simple questions. Where do you see yourself at the end of 2019? Where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in the land of plenty? Do you see yourself in the land of debt free? Do you see yourself in the land of skinny jeans? You have to mentally have a vision for yourself. Listen, you could apply this sermon to every aspect of your life. Or how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself skinny? Do you see yourself healthy? Do you see yourself out of the medications? Do you see yourself out of the hospital? You have to have a vision for yourself. Now, once you have a vision, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 states this. And I love this. It states, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Do me a favor. Circle, write the vision. Underline, make it plain. And underline, he may run who reads it. So it's not enough just to have a mental vision. You have to write it down. Why? Uh, You're not that smart enough to remember it. If you can't remember where you put your keys, what makes you think you can remember your vision? (laughs) You got to write it down. Why? Write it down is a conscious decision that this is what I'm going to do. This is my vision. This is the new me. This is the stronger me in 2019. This is the healthy me. So you have to write your vision down. So I'm just going to give you some questions to help you. You're going to prepare your vision today. And I want everyone, after you leave service today, I want you to go home and I want you to write a vision over your life for 2019. So here's just some key questions that you ask yourself when writing down a vision. Question number one is this. Is it specific? I'm sorry. Is it specific? Yes. Is it specific? 
So many of the visions are left unfulfilled because they're too general. They're too open-ended. Like say, for example, if your vision is to preach the gospel, that's not a vision. That's your mission. Everyone here's mission is to preach the gospel. The vision is how am I going to preach the gospel? Am I going to preach it as a worship leader? Am I going to preach it in my life group? Am I going to preach it on the pulpit? Am I going to preach it at the corner of the strip? How am I going to preach the gospel? Your vision has to be specific. The Word of God states this in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. It says, make it plain. Make your vision plain. Make it clear cut. Don't, don't put all that fluff. Make it clear cut. Make it plain. Make it plain so that a sixth grader can understand your vision. Make it clear cut and make it plain. Now, for example, if your vision is this, I want to lose weight by 2019, that's not a vision. That's too general. Rather say, write down in your vision this, by the end of June, I am going to lose 30 pounds. You do the math, that's five pounds a month. That's how you be getting more specific. That's how you are more specific in writing down your vision. Or, or, or 2019, I'm going to be a better husband. Everyone wants to be a better husband. But you got to be more specific. You'll say things like this, I'll be a better husband by working less on my truck and more on my marriage. I'll be a better husband by playing less video games and playing with my wife. <laughs> You got to make your vision specific. It says make it plain. Another way that you could see make it plain is you got to, once you write your vision, put it at somewhere that you could see in plain sight. Don't hide it under your bed. Don't hide it in your closet. But put your vision after you write it somewhere that is plain to see. And there are two places in your home that you could put your vision on that's plain to see. These two places is the bathroom mirror and the refrigerator. Why these two places? Because... Bathroom mirror, you can't help looking at yourself. <laughs> and so every time you look at yourself, you can see your vision right there in plain sight. The refrigerator, why the refrigerator? Because you can't help opening it up and eating the mayonnaise. So before you open it up to eat the mayonnaise, you can see your vision that, oh, I'm supposed to lose 20 pounds by the end of June. So I'm just going to stop opening it and not eat the mayonnaise. You got to put your vision in plain sight. You make it specific Put it in plain sight so that you remember it. Amen. So here's another question when preparing your, your vision. Is it specific? Is it realistic? Is your vision realistic? So many visions are left unfulfilled and incomplete because it's not realistic. If you wrote down on your paper, by the end of January, I want to look 18 again. <laughs> specific but not realistic. <laughs> or say you, say, you say things like this, you know what, by the end of January, I'm gonna save $100,000. Specific, but you only make $40,000 a year. <laughs> not realistic. You see what ends up happening if your vision is not realistic? You end up cheating life. You end up lying. How are you going to make up for the other $60,000 that you had said, I'm going to complete this vision by the end of January? What ends up happening is you do ungodly things. You might sell yourself to make up that money. Or you call in sick at your job while you go work your roadside pharmacy. It's coming, roadside pharmacy, get it? You see, when your vision is not realistic... Chances are they will never get fulfilled, and chances are you'll end up doing ungodly, unchristlike things and trying to accomplish it. And I've seen so many believers are stressed out by this time of the year because they spread themselves so thin because they put an unrealistic expectation, unrealistic vision over their lives. The Word of God states this. It states that they may run who read it. Your vision has to be achievable and attainable so that when you see it, you can say things like this. Oh, I get him. I could run with that. Oh, lose 20 pounds by the end of June? I get him. I could run with that. Oh, save $120 every month so that by the end of the year, I make $1,440 of bonus money? I could do that. I could run with that. The reason why I said $120 every month because a case of Heineken costs $30. 
And if you drink a case of Heineken every week, that's $120 that you'll be spending on a case of Heineken. Rather, you should be allocating those funds for your vision. So you got to be specific and you got to be realistic. Here's the last question in preparing your vision. Is it fantastic? Mr. Fantastic. Oh, Mr. Fantastic. Ooh. Is Shaggy still making music? I haven't heard Shaggy. Man, whenever that song came on, Helen was like, oh, that's my song. Where's my boy, Bam? Hi, Bam, Mr. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Your vision has to be fantastic. You have to have some goal that inspires you at the end of it all. Like, for example, when a woman, when a bride gets, gets, prepares for her wedding date, most of the time she goes, ooh, I, I want to lose weight. Why? Because it's on my wedding day. And so the wedding day is motivation for her to lose weight. I want my man to see me walk down the aisle. I want him to double glance like, oh, baby, you look so good. I want to look good in this. They're going to take pictures of me. I look really skinny. I look really fine. I look really hot. You see, the wedding day is actually motivation for the woman, the bride, to get married, to lose weight. You gotta have some motivation, something fantastic, fun inspired, fun inhibiting at the end of your vision, because this is key. Because life is gonna come your way, and life is gonna say you can't do it, and life is gonna lie to you, and life is gonna say, God never said that about you. You will always remain that way. No, but if you have a vision, a, 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 a fantastic end product of your vision, guess what? Your vision now becomes your motivator. And it will motivate you and inspire you to go beyond the storms. Say, you know what? I'm going to save, save money uh, 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 by, by June. Why? So, so, so that my family and I can go on that vacation that I promised them. So when your boss yells at you and when your leader yells at you, you say, oh, Lord, I thank you. I've saved so much money. I can't wait to get out of this stuff. I'm so glad I got a vacation to take my family to. I can't wait. Thank you, boss. Thank you, leader. But see you in about two weeks because I saved enough money to go on vacation. So your vision, is it fantastic? So when you prepare your vision, make it plain, make it clear cut. Is it realistic? Is it specific? And is it fantastic? Somebody praise the Lord and say amen. amen. Now, we could write the vision all we want. We could put nice stuff on our vision. But the key to unfinished business is to act. And I'm going to give you a secret to fulfilling your unfinished business. Now, many people have written books about this stuff. People are getting paid millions of dollars for what I'm going to share you, but I'm going to give it to you for free, okay? The secret to fulfilling your vision is management. Number two, jot this down. Management is vital to achieving your vision. People fold, get stressed out, want to give up, Simply because they mismanage the resources that God has given them. The word management, I made, this is my own definition. Uh, don't beat me up for it, but I kind of just wrote my own definition. Management is the skillful and effective act of handling resources. Those resources are either persons or things to get the most value or the best return. Listen, another word for the word management is what we Christians call stewardship. I got a nice slide for you, Seth. Can you put that up? Bam. Success in life happens when you properly manage all the resources that God has given you. Your job, your finances, your calendar, your checkbook, your career, your marriage, your health, your spouse, your kids, your home. All these things require management. Success in fulfilling your unfinished business is based on how well you steward or how well you manage these resources from God. But Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 states this. It states, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Underline yet for an appointed time. 
I never like that because that requires me to wait. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it surely come, it will not tarry. From the time the vision is casted to the time the vision is fulfilled, there's an in-between space, yet an appointed time. And what you do in between here will determine whether you are successful or not. I got a slide here just to show you. I like slides. From when the time the vision is casted to when the vision is fulfilled, it's this huge gray area that is in dire need of management. Now, there are three superpowers that exist in this area of management that you're going to have to master managing. The three superpowers or the influencers that we all face that we need to master managing is time, money, and health. Time, money, and health. Success happens when you properly manage your time, when you properly manage your money, and when you properly manage your health. I'm going to give you a principle that I heard a pastor, uh, I heard him say uh, a while ago. And the principle is this. God will not necessarily give you what you ask for, but he will give you what you can manage. Why would God give you more time if you're not managing the time you have now? Why would God give you more money if you're not managing the money you have now? Why would God give you more health if you're mismanaging the health that he has given you now? And so today I just want to focus on these three major powers, major influencers in life on how you can manage and find success in 2019. Let's look at the first superpower, time. Time cannot be controlled. Time cannot be stopped. Time waits for no man. So the only thing you can do with time, if you cannot control it and you cannot stop it, the only thing you can do with time is manage it. If you don't know how to manage time, you will always be a slave of time. You will always see time as an enemy. That's why many times you say things like this, I wish I had enough time. You will always work for time. So I'm going to give you something super practical that will help you in 2019 in managing time. Jot this down. Manage time. Get a calendar. Get a calendar. We live in a modern era. Everyone has iPhones and smartphones. And in your smartphones is a calendar. Pastor Terry blessed me with this calendar. It's a written calendar. I still like to write stuff down. I still like paper. Because it works effective when I'm using the bathroom. <laughs> iPads and iPhones don't work as well. Get it? <laughs> Woo. Get yourself a calendar. Why? Man, it's usually this time when I talk to so many believers and so many people. They're so stressed out. They worn themselves out thin. Why? Because they double book themselves. You come to worship practice when it should have been date night with your wife. You come to some church meeting when it should have been going to the park with your kids. We end up double booking ourselves. I met so many people in this past week say, man, I got three Christmas parties to go to. Three Christmas parties. And they're not happy. They're stressed out. Why? Because they double booked themselves. You know what your calendar does? Your calendar gives you boundaries. Your calendar gives you boundaries. The reason why we're, so spread, we're spread so thin is because we don't have boundaries in our lives. Calendar gives you boundaries. Calendars help you with your yes being yeses and your no's being no's. Amen. Amen. I often use my calendar as a scapegoat. I'm a popular guy. A lot of people like me. So they invite me to their parties. And you know what I say? I say things like this. Oh, sorry, my calendar told me that I can't be there today. 
You can use your calendar as a scapegoat. Otherwise, you'll say yes, 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 yes. Without a vision, people go wild. So calendar helps you in that way. And the worst enemy of a calendar, the worst friend you should have is a friend by the name of Les. Les will eat up your time like there's nothing else to eat. Les will call you up and say, Bam, what you doing? Oh, nothing. Well, let's go here. And let's go there. And let's do this. And let's do that. Let's go do this. And let's... Less will eat up your time. So much so that you devote so, many, so much of your time to less rather than the vision that God has given you. You need a calendar so you don't double book yourself so you can have boundaries in your life so your yeses can be yeses and your noes can be noes. Manage your time by getting a calendar. Let's talk about the money thing. Money is a good thing, but if you can't manage money, money will manage you. If you don't know how to steward money, money will steward you. So much of the people of God, the church, is operating in a poverty mindset because we don't know how to manage our finances. How do you manage money? Here, manage money, stick to a budget. Stick to a budget. Stick to a budget. Many visions are killed because of this term, misappropriating funds. Do you know that your vision costs money? Do you know that your vision is an investment? It requires an investment. If you want to be a guitar player, you got to save up to buy a guitar. How can you be a guitar player without a guitar? And so you want to be a guitar player. And the money that you have allocated to buy yourself a guitar, you went and bought yourself lashes. You've taken what was meant for your son's birthday cake and you used it on yourself. I don't want to get too mean. <laughs> Misappropriating funds. Your vision has a cost. Your vision requires an investment. So there is a budget for your vision that you need to stick to. Watch out for the snake called Swipey. Old McDonald had a snake, and Swipey was his name. Oh, and a Swipey, Swipey here, and a Swipey, Swipey there. Here, Swipey, there, Swipey. Here, Swipey, there, Swipey, 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 Swipey. The snake named Swipey, or the monkey named Chip. Insert chip here, insert chip here, insert chip here, insert chip here. Hey, chip, hey, chip. Let me give you some advice on managing money. Credit cards is money you don't have. It's money you don't have. So do me a favor. All the debt you've accumulated in the last couple of weeks buying people everything on your credit card. Pay it off as quick as you can. Get a budget going. Pay it off as quick as you can. After you're done with it, cut the darn thing. Get rid of it because credit cards is money you don't have. Manage your money by sticking to a budget. Watch out for misappropriating funds. So manage your time. Manage your money. Here's the third thing, the third superpower. Manage your health. How? Simply eat right. Simply eat right. So many visions in our lives are left unfulfilled because people die before completing the vision.
People die before the vision is complete. The health report is out. Last year, Asian Pacific Islanders are already diagnosed at high risk type 2 diabetes. Just being born as an Asian Pacific Islander. If you're from Hawaii, if you're, that's your nationality, if you're from Samoa, if you're from Tonga, if you're from Fiji, if you're from Tahiti, all in the Pacific region. If, if, you, are simp- if you are just born, you are already at high risk type 2 diabetes. We're already in the negative. And so in order for us, I believe that we could beat it. I believe that our nation will turn things around. I believe that our people can turn things around. I believe that we can reverse the doctor's report. We can beat diabetes. I've got so many friends and family who've lost their lives because of diabetes. And they just just didn't lose their lives. They lost their purpose. They lost the vision that the Lord has for them because they didn't take care of their health. You want to fit in those skinny jeans again? Simply eat right. I'm going to say something that's going to get you guys so upset. Stop eating rice. Stop eating. Stop eating rice, even brown rice. That's like sugarcoating sin. <laughs> Eat more vegetables. The last thing we want to do is cross the finish line, and we've lost some soldiers along the way. Not because of character, not because of God's purpose, not because of theology, not because they could preach the gospel, not because of any of that. But we just lost them along the way because they didn't manage their health. You could have all the money in the world. You could have all the finances in the world. And you could have all the time in the world that you could spend. But if you don't have the health and the energy to enjoy and express Jesus Christ, then it's nothing. So manage your time. Get a calendar. Manage your money. Stick to a budget. Manage your health. Eat right. I'm going to close with this. There's only one more missing ingredient that I want to give you. I got a chart here in the table here. This table is the truth about our insufficiency. Let me just kind of go through it. To the left is when you're a child. Do you know that when you're a child, you got a lot of time, you got a lot of energy, but you got no money? You got a lot of time to give, you got a lot of health to give, but you got no money. So what ends up happening is the child grows up and says, I got to get a job, I got to get a job. Why? So I could make up for the money that I don't have. And so when the child gets up and gets older, he gets a job. And once he's an adult, he gets a job. Guess what? He has all the money now, he has all the energy, but he doesn't have time to spend with people anymore. He was so driven to get money that now he has money, but now he doesn't have time to invest in his vision. So he tells himself, you know what, I'm just going to work harder, I'm going to work harder, I'm going to retire, and I'm going to retire so I can spend more time with people. Next thing you know, he's, he's an elder and he's retired. He has all the time now, he has all the money now. But he doesn't have the energy anymore. He doesn't have the health. Why? Because he exerted all that energy. He was so driven to get money. Next thing you know, he's gotten so stressed out that he doesn't have the health or the energy to give anymore. When I looked at this chart, something dawned on me. We are insufficient of ourselves. In every aspect of our lives, in every stage development of our lives, we are insufficient and inefficient. And the bottom line out of everything that I said to you in regards to managing and to keys to the unfinished business and keys to being successful, in all that I said, it boils down to this. Because of our insufficiency, God has to be at the center of it all. Number three, God has to be at the center of it all. In the center of your vision casting. In the center of your vision writing, in the center of your time management, in the center of your finances, in the center of your health, in the center of your worship, in the center of your church, in the center of your business, in the center of your life, in the center of your career, in the center of your promotions, in the center of every aspect of the human stage development. 
God has to be at the center of it all. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says this, seek first the kingdom of God. Don't seek finances first. Don't seek your vision first. You seek first God who will grant you that vision and help you write it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Underline, all these things shall be added to you. The prerequisite of having all these things added to you, time, money, health, all these things added unto you, the prerequisite for that is to seek God first in it all. Put God at the center of it all. And he will help you strategize your vision. He will help you finish the unfinished business that he has for you, Archippus. And he will help you manage your time. He will help you manage your finances. And he will definitely help you manage your health. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.